For the last 25 years, I've listened to preachers, teachers, and believers say things that have absolutely fascinated and captured my attention. They share with me things that they've experienced that I'm intrigued by. Things like spiritual manifestations, spiritual gifts, and the paranormal. I've always been intrigued by these things. And so I decided it's time for me to investigate, especially when somebody come to me with the question, hey, pastor, can Satan put thoughts in your mind or can Satan read your mind? I thought, wow, how interesting is that? And I want to share with you six things, six things that the Bible teaches about Satan, six things that we know for sure, three things about how Satan operates, and then one thing that we must do to protect ourselves from Satan and demons. Let's go back to November 13, 1974. Paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren are called in to investigate the case of Ronald DeFeo Jr., who murdered both of his parents, two brothers, and two sisters. The Warrens' investigation was to determine if a demonic presence was truly responsible for the murders. Seven years later, February 16, 1981, Arnie Cheyenne Johnson, 19 years old, stabbed his landlord, Alan Bono, who was 40 at the time, stabbed him more than 20 times with a pocket knife in a heated argument. And Johnson claims that during an exorcism of 11-year-old David Glatzel, that the spirit left the boy and entered him. And his case in court was, the devil made me do it. His case, by the way, marks the first time in U.S. history that a murder suspect would claim demonic possession as a defense. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe that demons are real. I believe that Satan is real. And I believe that demon possession is real. But I do not believe that a Christian can be possessed by a demon, simply for the fact that a demon and the Holy Spirit of God cannot occupy the same space at the same time. So a Christian is not necessarily possessed by a demon, but he can be tormented by a demon. Now, this video is not about demon possession. It's more about the question, can Satan get into our head? Can Satan read our mind? And can Satan plant thoughts? I don't claim to be an expert on this. As a matter of fact, I got a lot to learn about this subject, but I have studied this and I do have some information that I feel like I need to share with you to bring some clarity to the subject. Here are six things that we know for sure. We know that demons are in opposition to the kingdom of God. Jesus had just cast out a demon and they said that it was done by the power of Satan. Jesus says, Satan isn't going to cast out Satan by the power of Satan because a house that is divided against itself will fall. So if Satan casts out Satan by the power of Satan, how can his kingdom remain? The implication there is that it can't. Number two, we know that demons try to trick men to do their will rather than God's will. 2 Timothy 2, 25 and 26 says that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Luke 8, 26 through 39, we have the story of the man of the Gadarenes that was possessed by a legion of spirits. In verse 28, Jesus commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. Verse 33, the demons went out of the man, entered the swine, and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the lake and drowned. And there you have the first case of deviled ham. Number four, that unless a person is born again, demons have the power of death and use people's fear of death to their advantage. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15 says that inasmuch then as children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is, the devil. Number five, we know that Satan is a supernatural created being. He is not divine. Ezekiel 28 verses 11 through 19, especially verses 14 and 15, where the prophet is speaking in reference to Lucifer. And he says that you were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. We tend to think that since Satan is a supernatural being and that God is a supernatural being, that 
The two of them possess equal amounts of authority and power. However, we have to remember that Satan was created by God. He is a supernatural being, but he is not divine. Therefore, his power is not equal to God's, which leads to number six. Because Satan is a created being, he has limitations. Satan and his demons are powerful, very powerful, more powerful than you and I, but not as powerful as God. Notice the limitations. Number one, Satan is not omnipresent, which means that he cannot be in more than one place at one time. Job 1.7 says, And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking back and forth upon it. The Apostle Peter said the first thing in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. He says that your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Notice these two verses teach us that he is not everywhere present. He roams to and fro on the earth, and so do his demons, seeking someone whom they may devour. Number two, Satan is not omniscient. He knows a lot of things, but he does not know everything. Jesus knew people's thoughts. God knows people's thoughts. The Holy Spirit knows people's thoughts. Nowhere are we told that Satan knows people's thoughts. Remember, he knows a lot of things, but he does not know all things. Number three, Satan is not omnipotent. He's powerful, but he does not possess all power. Remember in Job, the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out of the presence of the Lord. Chapter 2 and verse 6, the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he is in your hand, but spare his life. So based on what we know, Satan has limitations that has been put on him by God who has all power. Therefore, I think that we can safely conclude when we ask the question, can Satan read our mind? And does Satan put thoughts in our head because he is not omnipotent, because he is not omniscient, we would have to say the answer is no. Which leads to the next question, well, if Satan can't put thoughts in our head, and if Satan cannot read our mind, how does he operate? And friends, when I studied this out, this absolutely put fear in my life because of the reality of it. Remember, Satan cannot possess a Christian, but he can torment a Christian. Let me explain how he operates. Listen very, very carefully. Satan has been observing mankind since the garden. That's about 6,000 years. That makes him an expert at predicting human behavior. Remember, he is the prince of the power of the air who now works in the disobedient. Demons can anticipate what you might do in a given situation without knowing your mind, without knowing your thoughts, because they can see us from the outside and they've studied us. They know what we read, what we watch, and what we hear in our conversations. They see our physical responses. They hear our private words and are no doubt skilled at reading our expressions. Don't forget Ephesians 6.12, that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So by hearing and seeing what we're taking into our minds, demons have a good idea what to tempt us with. This should be a very strong warning about the things that we're reading, about the things that we're watching, about the things that we're allowing our children to listen to on the radio and watch on the internet. We've got to protect their eyes, their ears, and their minds because Satan knows that if he can capture our thoughts for five seconds, he's going to have them for five minutes or more. Everything that we put into our minds by watching and by reading is either ammunition for the Holy Spirit of God for righteousness or for the devil and his demons for unrighteousness. So one way that he operates is by observation and prediction. Second, sometimes it's God that permits Satan to act. We've already looked at Job 
We've also got David. First Chronicles 21.1, Satan stood up against the Lord and provoked David to number Israel. The word provoked means to provoke, to move, to incite, or to cause. A parallel verse is found in 2 Samuel chapter 24 and verse 1, where it says the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel and he moved David against them to say, go and number Israel and Judah. So sometimes it is God who allows Satan and uses Satan to accomplish his will and his purpose. Number three, sometimes God will use Satan to accomplish spiritual growth in the life of a believer. Remember, Satan is not omniscient, so he does not know all things. Luke 22, 31 through 32. The Lord said, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. 1 Corinthians 5 says that it's actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and such sexual immorality as is not even named among the Gentiles, that a man has his father's wife. Deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. 2 Corinthians 12 verses 7 through 10 says that lest I should be exalted above measure, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan. We've looked at Job. There's John. There's Acts. All through the Bible we find that God will allow Satan to act for the purpose of spiritual discipline and spiritual growth. Finally, Satan cannot read our mind, nor can he put thoughts in our mind, but he will use every means available to get into our minds. For example, through the eyes and through the ears, what we watch and what we listen to. Because Satan knows that if he can get into our mind and influence our thinking and just leave it at that, that we will ruin ourselves. And that's why God has given us his armor, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Hey, this has been Jeremy Skinner, and I thank you for sticking around to the very end. And if you have found this to be helpful and insightful, I want to ask you to subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell as I upload videos twice a week, and I don't want you to miss any one of them. Probably one of the most important things that I want to ask you to do is to share this with people who have questions about spirituality, questions about the paranormal, questions about Satan and his demons and the way that they operate. Hey, thanks a lot. God bless.